Hi everyone, my name is Christina Richardson. I'm a member of the Global Personal Care Marketing Team, and I'm joining you today from our Atlas Point facility located in Newcastle, Delaware, USA. I'm gonna be speaking with various members of the Atlas Point team to explore Crota's commitment to safety and sustainability. Atlas Point is one of our largest manufacturing sites at Crota, and therefore, it's very strategic in delivering our 2030 commitment to be climate, land, and people positive. I'm joined by Chris Barnett, Site Director at Atlas Point, and first we'll start with some history of this site. So Atlas Point has been in operation since 1937. With such a long history here at the site, can you share some important facts and key milestones of the facility? Certainly. There's one milestone I'm especially proud of that just happened this year. Uh, in June, we actually reached a year without a recordable injury, so our total recordable injury rate is zero. Uh, Crota really focuses a lot on safety, and so we're, we're proud to be a, a, a really good member of the Crota team and, and bringing in that safety performance. Uh, Crota, as, you know, as a site, you know, you know that Crota bought this facility in 2006, but it has a, a long history before that. This site really pioneered the surfactant uh, industry back in the 30s and 40s, especially with the uh, two brand names called Spans and Tweens. So, you know, this, this site really has been practicing smart science to improve uh, lives uh, long before Crota coalesced that into a purpose statement. So it's been a really proud tradition here. The site exists about, well, similar to what it does today, probably from about the 60s and 70s onward. It's about the same size. We're 144 acres right along the Delaware River. We do have 24-7 operation, and we're about 230-some employees, a lot of scientists and engineers, as you can imagine, uh, all types of people that support the business, and then a very dedicated and highly trained union staff here at the site that does tremendous work. We make somewhere between three and 400 different products any given year, uh, so you can imagine that keeps us very busy. Uh, this year we're on track to make about 50,000 metric tons. So, you know, coming out of COVID, we've had very good business and things have been very, very interesting here. Uh, we've managed to meet our, our customers' demands and we're very fortunate that we, we have a lot of great customers in almost any industry you can imagine. So uh, it's, it's been, a, been a pleasure doing business here. Great. And as you mentioned, Crota acquired Atlas Point as part of the Unikima acquisition in 2006. So since then, I'm sure there's been a ton of investments and improvements to the site to make this a state-of-the-art facility in terms of safety and sustainability. Can you just touch on some of the most exciting improvements that have happened in recent years in Atlas Point? Oh, absolutely. Uh, things change constantly here. Uh, Crota is constantly growing, constantly trying to get better. Since 2006, they've spent uh, right around 500 million, almost 500 million dollars to make improvements here at the site. A lot of that, significant amount of it, going towards environmental systems, uh, sustainability systems, certainly a lot of safety improvements. Uh, one of the things that started very early on after Crota bought the site, they had an eye for sustainability even before they made a grand goal recently of reducing carbon footprint by 2030, uh, a 50% you know, reduction by 2030. Back in 2012, uh, they actually started up these two engines that use landfill gas from the local landfill to make electricity at the site. And I know you'll be talking a little bit more with a, a gentleman, uh, John Elliott, uh, about their sustainability accomplishments. But, you know, that's not been all. We've done things like install solar fields and, and things. Certainly our commitment to safety has been very, very strong. Uh, we do a lot of things here where we solicit uh, suggestions and other things from employees to try to make our safety systems better. And, you know, this year has been a great year in, in safety investment. And in the last four years, we probably spent about 30 million just on sustainability and safety efforts alone. Thanks, Chris, so much for your insight and for sharing some information on the investments that we've made at Atlas Point so far. We'll loop back in with you later to touch on some of the other programs that you're spearheading here at Atlas Point. Thanks, Christine. I look forward to it. Thanks. Next, though, let's learn more about sustainable manufacturing at Atlas Point and the capability development for our eco range of surfactants. A major investment in sustainability and process improvement comes from our recent commissioning of our bio-based ethylene oxide facility here on site. I'm joined by Chris Hood, Head of Manufacturing for EO. Hi Chris, how are you? I'm doing great, Christina. How are you? Good, good to see you. So with this significant investment into the capability to produce our own bio-based EO here on site, can you explain why Crota chose this route for investment? Sure. Well, as you know, sustainability is key to everything we do here at Corota. And you know, go back 10 years ago, as we were looking at our portfolio of products and our desire to be bio-based, we realized 
that uh, a significant amount of our products utilized ethylene oxide, which came from petroleum. So if we wanted to make a significant change, we'd have to make a significant investment. And so with that came um, this, our, our, our ethylene oxide facility. So we partnered with a leading technology provider to conceptualize, design, and build an ethanol to ethylene oxide facility, which uh, broke ground in 2015 and then we started up in 2018. Right, and so this decision to produce bio-based EO here on site is really a step change in the industry, and it's a unique approach to the manufacture of ethoxylate and surfactants. So can you explain how this changes historical chemistries and how it makes them more sustainable and then therefore more relevant to the marketplace? Sure. You know, uh, so one of the cool things is that our, our, our bridge and tween products, which were invented here so many years ago, are being reinvented now with the same great capabilities in the marketplace, but they're in a, in a uh, bio-based format. And as industry goes forward, we have to change. We have to use innovation to, to bring those changes about of meeting customer needs, but also doing that in an environmentally friendly way. Definitely. And speaking about those products, Crota is committed to green chemistry principles and applying them to new product development. So can you just speak on how the green chemistry principles were applied to the eco products? Of course. So first and foremost, we had to continue to meet those customer performance needs. Um, but not only were we able to, to make ethylene oxide from ethanol be bio-based, but we also wanted to minimize the amount of byproducts that come from the process and where possible utilize those byproducts. So we did that uh, rather well with our monoethylene glycol or MEG product, which we take and actually manufacture other pegs and products that are, are, are important in the marketplace as well. Great. And so throughout this conversation, you've definitely expressed Crota's commitment to sustainability, but I think we have an even higher commitment to safety. So what are some of the, the safety protocols that are in place to protect employees and the neighbors who live and work near the facility? Sure. Yeah, so our commitment uh, is still unwavering around the safety and health of our employees as well as the communities where we operate. And so, you know, one of the ways that we do that is, is our management system, uh, responsible care system, where we, we encompass all aspects of operations. Um, you know, some of the ways that we do that is spending thousands of hours looking at the design of this facility involving engineers, safety professionals, operators, to make sure that we looked at the operation from all aspects. We investigate all near misses uh, early on to make sure that we can prevent them from becoming worse later on. Right, which is really important. And in speaking about safety, uh, can't forget about emissions with the ever-growing concern over emissions levels at manufacturing facilities worldwide. Can you speak on some of the controls that we have in place here to make sure that we're good environmental stewards in terms of emissions? Sure, so um, we're always looking to reduce or eliminate our emissions where possible. So at our batch plant, we reduced our EO emissions 99% over the last five years and we're going to continue to do that as we go forward wherever we install new technology or new facilities we look we install best available control technology uh, one of the new projects we're really excited about here in the future is a new boiler which is pretty boring but we're going to do that in a, in a more environmentally friendly way emitting less emissions uh, as we go forward great thank you so much chris for your insight sounds like there's a lot of great work being done by the team dedicated to eco to make sure that Crota is a, a forefront in the sustainable manufacturing place. Thanks Thank for you. stopping by and visiting with us. Across the Atlas Point facility, the team has been working hard to meet our global goals to reduce our carbon emissions by 50% by 2030 versus our 2018 levels. I'm joined by Jonathan Elliott, Regional Technical Manager, who's been a key member of the team working on our decarbonization plans. Hi, John, how are you? Good, thanks, Christina. So with this strong target to reduce our emissions by 50% by 2030, can you give some background information on the target and the plans that we have in place to meet it? Absolutely, That's, it's a very lofty goal that we've signed on to, but by reducing our scope one and scope two emissions by 2030, we, we are clearly signing up and meeting the sustainable development goals issued by the UN. The scope one emissions are those that are associated directly with the facility, whereas scope two are carbon emissions uh, supporting electricity and utilities provided to the site. 2020 was the first year that each site was charged with developing their own decarbonization strategy. And we anticipate revisiting this every year as site operations change and new technology is developed. 
And I'm sure part of this strategy for decarbonization will be to increase our renewable energy. So we're actually standing in our solar fields right now, which is a source of renewable energy that I'm sure many people are familiar with. Can you give some details on this resource and how we use it for power? Absolutely. This solar field was initially installed in 2015 and since then is providing it over 700 kilowatts of power. It's actually a tale of redemption because this was a parcel of land that was previously used to store number six fuel oil. So being able to remove that uh, uh, carbon heavy fuel and install it solar has been a big improvement for the site. It's been so successful we've actually recently commissioned a new solar array on top of our warehouse roof which combined will produce 1.5 megawatts of power which is roughly the equivalent of 1,200 American homes. Wow, that's really impressive. So another unique source of renewable energy that we have here on site is our landfill gas that we use to provide steam and electricity through our combined heat and power units. So as we're standing in front of these CHP units now, can you give some details on them and how we use this unique source for our needs? Absolutely. These two engines installed in 2013 each, produ each produce 1.1 megawatts of electricity. We have also supplemented that with a new engine, which is 2.2 megawatts. The waste heat from those engines also generates steam, so we can eke out every ounce of energy possible from the landfill gas. Combined, the electricity usage between solar and CHP provides over 60% of the site electrical usage here on site. Wow, that's really impressive. And so what about the excess electricity that we need that we can't source on site? Where do we get that from and is it renewable? That's, that's a great question. And back in 2018, recognizing that we were aiming at the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, we, we switched over entirely to wind-sourced electricity. So whatever we cannot produce here on site, we supplement with wind source from, from the grid. Great. So are there any other plans and projects in place now to reach those decarbonization goals that we have? Absolutely. The 50% reduction by 2030 is going to require a significant effort and many different projects. One of the most significant projects we're going to be uh, completing is installing a new boiler, which will increase the amount of landfill gas that we currently use on site to generate steam. Presently, that number is over 25%, but we, we are looking to drive that much higher. Besides that, there are a host of other goals where we're looking at potential other sources of sustainable fuels. And we're also going to be looking at energy improvement projects, as well as increased electrification, where we can continue to buy scope to uh, emission-free electricity. Wow. Thanks so much, John, for your insight. Sounds like there's a lot of great work being done to reach our decarbonization goals. I appreciate your time. Next, we'll check back in with Chris Barnett, Site Director at Atlas Point, to learn some more about our future plans at Atlas Point and any other programs that he's heading up here. And as the facilities work so hard to reduce emissions with control mechanisms in place throughout the facility, can you share some information on the steps being done at the batch plan and any impact we've seen from that? I, I love talking about this topic because uh, it's been a real terrific journey here since I've worked at Crota and watching how the company supports us in reducing emissions. Uh, we're outside in this lovely day and we certainly mean to keep our environment around us as pristine as we can. Part of that is making sure that we get better year to year in our emissions and we've done a terrific job on our batch plan. Um, we spent probably about $15 million in the last four years and I brought one particular type of emissions uh, called volatile or organic compounds. We've reduced those to one third of their previous levels in 2017. And we've also taken another compound, ethylene oxide, that we use as a raw material in our batch plant, and we've reduced those by 99%. So we've had quite a bit of success. Part of this has been done with uh, control systems like a scrubber that we just got done installing here uh, uh, about a year and a half ago. And this uses like a scrubbing solution to, to take out the compounds from the air. It does a really good job of helping us cleaning up our vent system. So, and we have a lot more in store. Uh, we'll hopefully spend even more money into the future. And a significant portion of that has to do with making our environmental uh, systems better at the site. Great, yeah, so like you said, I'm sure there's a lot coming for the future for Atlas Point on the back of all the great improvements that have already been made. Can you share just some examples of the investments that we will be putting forth in the future? Oh, certainly. I mean, not, not everything is as big and shiny as the scrubber system that we put in. You know, we spend a lot of money on the small things, too. One of the most important parts of sustainability and uh, helping us get better with our environmental emissions, other things like that, is to be able to really measure them, get a lot of granularity about where things are happening in the process. So one example would be the process we had, or the project we had 
just to install metering out some of our steam usage at the site. So we have some measurements in places, but getting more finite measurements around our facility will help us drive that understanding of you know, which processes do we have here that need the most work to make their sustainability better? Where can we get the best bang for our buck in reducing our emissions? We're doing things like that. You know, we're also looking into the future of you know, how do we even change the chemistry that we do here at the site? One of the holy grails of our industry is finding a way to get away from chemicals entirely and go to biological processes to make things like surfactants. So you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about those things and working hard to, to make um, you know, our, our future brighter where sustainability is concerned. So thanks, Chris, for taking some time away from the site today to meet us here at the Little League Baseball Field in Newcastle. Uh, we're here actually at this site to speak a little bit on the community. And so we've spoken all day about the improvements and plans that Atlas Point has made in terms of sustainability and safety. How have the local community in Newcastle received the plans that we've made? They're, they're very encouraged about it. Uh, you know, we talk about this pretty regularly with our community advisory council. So we do have a council that's made up of uh, people from the local communities around our site. It's made up of people from government agencies, from some of the first responders, some of the local businesses. Some uh, teachers from local schools come join us too. So this is really the group that we, we uh, meet with to try to give us feedback from the public and, and really hope to push messages out through them too to their communities. And they like what they hear. Of course, they expect more of it. That's the thing. They, they want us to do even more than we've done in the past towards meeting um, you know, better sustainability goals and certainly keep, keep on reducing our emissions. So uh, that's something we continue to work on. We also have close partnerships with some government agencies and we talk with them regularly. Uh, one of the things we talked about in the past was some of the work that we've done reducing emissions at the site around our, our batch plant. And certainly those discussions help put us uh, kind of in the know about certain regulation changes and things even before they happen. So we were able to act even before the regulations change. So we, we hope to keep those partnerships and really keep an active, transparent uh, communication style with the community around us. Great. And so, you know, 2020 has been a hard year for so many people around the world with many people struggling and some of our neighbors even struggling. So having this strong connection to the local community and wanting to make sure that we can help those in need, how have we really connected to the community and made sure that we're helping and making an impact on the community around us? That's, that's really been one of the, the best parts of our job this last year. Crota came out and, and offered us a chance to be able to support the communities around us and we, we took it. And we, we did work with local food banks and, and I, you know, from giving food to giving uh, monetary donations and then actually helping out in the field to be able to take food to the vehicles as people drove in. You know, we had COVID measures so no one was getting out of cars. So doing those kind of things was great. We certainly uh, you know, support our local community centers. And some of that involves things like uh, food banks and after school programs, things for kids. There's a lot of that stuff that's really dried up in COVID, but there are some places that still do it with good measures in place to prevent transmission. And, and we try to support those things. We recently also had a chance to support a, a great agency called Duffy's Hope. And in our area, they, they do a lot of work with foster kids and making sure that as foster kids come out of homes and they, they age into adults, uh, they help them uh, gain life experiences and make sure that they have that transition successfully and have uh, you know, a good level of responsibility and know how to live life uh, as a responsible adult. So that's great. You know, we get to help people in, in, in need and do all those things. But it's also fun. We, we're here today at the Little League Fields that we also support community stuff just generally. Uh, we sponsor three different Little League teams and fortunately are, we're able to get our name on the billboard here to show that we do support the community. And you know, this week, this coming weekend too, uh, I just talked with our local state representative, a gentleman named Franklin Cook, uh, who has also put us kind of in good touch with certain community organizations. And we're supporting a, a family fun day from a Newcastle County agency that, that you know, looks to support kids and, and make sure that families are well supported and get any uh, help in need. So looking forward to that. Yeah, so it sounds like there's a lot of great work being done to support the local community here mm -hmm. in Newcastle. So thanks very much for sharing. Oh, you're very welcome, thank you. Recapping our visit to Atlas Point today, I hope that you learned how we at Crota practically implement our smart science to improve lives and how we deliver to our 2030 goals to be climate, land, and people positive. I want to express my thanks to Chris Barnett, Chris Hood, and Jonathan Elliott for their time and for sharing their knowledge with us today. And I hope you all enjoyed this inside look to Atlas Point and all of the sustainability initiatives going on here.